Hi and welcome to this die designer video tutorial. For this video we are going to look at taper relieved holes. So if you go up to the pull down menu to hole types, click it, scroll down to taper relieved holes or TH from the command line. Click it and it will bring up the uh, taper relieved holes dialog box. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, and yeah, just to run you through this, these taper relieved holes are usually used in place of a die matrix or a die bushing. Okay, so, um, uh, and, well, let me see, let me run you through this real quick. First of all, you can enter your hole diameter, whatever that may be, uh, your land or your straight. In this case, I have 094 and the taper relief angle of a half a degree. Also, um, and this is for transformation data, these uh, taper relieved holes transform into drilled clearance holes for the slug. So, uh, to calculate the correct transformation data, you need to know what the insert thickness is and whatever you want for your offset per side. Right now I have it at a sixteenth of an inch. I know my inserts are an inch thick. And based on the hole diameter, the land in the straight, minus uh, from the insert thickness and the taper leaf angle, it'll, it'll calculate out the correct drilled uh, slug clearance hole. Uh, we have a couple more options. I will demonstrate those in a minute. Uh, but go into the help. If you if you're just want a refresher, click the help button. And uh, yeah, it gives you a, gives you a description of, of all the options, the menu location, the command line, uh, tells you what the intelligence is. Um, it has the ability to transform, the object transform, uh, the whole table or HD from the command line. And um, it also has the touch command ability in it. You can click this uh, video demonstration button to watch this video. But um, but yeah, before I get started, I'm going to cancel out of here. And uh, this is actually a current design I'm working on. <clears throat> nice tool. Uh, makes uh, four variations of of a part. Nice nice little rollover. Wraps itself over itself and kicks itself up up above itself so nice little part got a few challenges to it but anyways if we go up to uh, before I start this if we go up to settings and click on it you'll see my punch and die clearance is zero so I have not entered that in I, I could click it and then it would prompt me I'd enter it in right now but I want to show you something else but I do know it's 032 thick material Okay, so now let's go back back to our taper relief hole dialog box. <clears throat> so, if I knew what my hole diameter was, I could type it in manually. Highlight this, type it in, you know, 0.125 or whatever it may be. Um, and I may know that, but then, you know, when I start adding die clearance and everything else to it, you know, and I could typo it and put it in the wrong way, um, I'll show you how to, in fact, I already have these in here, so let me erase them. So again, I'm going to hit D for distance. And you'll see down here, this is a 126th hole. This is a 100 thou diameter part hole and another 126 diameter pilot hole. So, hole types, taper relieved holes. Instead of typing this in and calculating my die clearance and adding it all together and putting it in here, I'm going to just go to select hole. And I'll select this 126 hole. 
So once I do, you'll see it enters this in as 126. Now we want to add our die clearance. But if you remember earlier, I went up to settings and our die clearance was zero. So when that's the case, I'll click add die clearance, but they know it, it knows it hasn't been set yet. So I will go 5% per side, which is 0 0.0016. Click. When I click OK, the uh, whole diameter will update for that per side, so it'll be times 2. So now it updated to 0.129 and 2 tenths. Click OK. And there, put it in. Now if I ran the distance command, and you look and you see there's that 1,006 tenths per side. Now a little bit of the intelligence. Uh, first of all, the touch command. So this is using a pre-configured mouse button. Put the cursor over it. Click it. Brings up the dialog box again with the same numbers from the previous last time that I used this. Well, I know I have two of these holes, so I'm going to just click OK and drop it in for this, uh, this other pilot line. Let's start it again, and I'll use the touch command. This, this time I'm going to select the hole, and it's this 100 thou diameter part hole. And you can see it's 100. Now when I click Add Die Clearance, we've already entered it in once as that 1,006 tenths per side. So it won't prompt me for that again. It'll just update the whole diameter. And there you go, 103 and 2 tenths. OK. And voila. So I showed you little intelligence. I showed you the touch command intelligence. Now I'm going to show you the uh, whole chart intelligence, and I'm going to freeze the strip layer. I am going to copy this whole die yoke, just this one die yoke over here. I am going to thaw all. I'm going to copy this insert out of the die block. I am going to transform a few things. Uh, these socket head cap screws. I am going to transform into a counter bore. And instead of taking for these this size socket head of 210 deep counter bore, I want some sharpening room, so I'm going to change it to 0.5. And that's updated. Uh, we have these pilot spoolies that they have a spring behind them, and behind the spring they have a unified cap screw. So what I usually do, they, these have intelligence too, so I'm going to just copy one of these uh, Misumi uh, lifter guides out. I'm going to go to Object Transform. Transforms it into what I want it to be. Now I'm going to go to Search and Replace. Select that whole group and then select all the groups. Okay. I am not going to put the wire start holes in for all these cuts, uh, just, just for sake of time. But I am going to quickly dimension this. <clears throat> so we'll go to datum dimensioning, B for base point, snap to the sharp corner. I'm going to use the auto option, A for auto. Lower left boundary, upper right boundary, and then select all the all the uh, uh, in, uh, holes and stuff to dimension. And you can see it automatically dimensions it. Uh, it tries to, to dimension it neatly with the offset. I don't like this offset here, so I'm going to drag this dimension here. I'm going to erase this dimension. I'm going to start the datum command, use the dog leg option, and snap to perpendicular and clean it up a little bit. I'll use the stretch option. And yeah, that's already that's all, all dimension. Now we're going to go to the whole chart, which is the other intelligent feature of, of these uh, taper-relieved holes. So we'll go to dimension, 
whole table or HD from the command line. We got a couple options. I'm going to use the select option. Labels all the holes. And well, as you can see, no, A, those uh, slip fit lifter guides, those Misumis, you know, labeled that. But, anyways, the ones we're talking about, and that's a little close, so I'm going to manually move it. I'm going to manually move this. So we got two D holes and a C hole for these taper relieved. So as you can see, the C hole, 103, two hole through, 094 land, half a degree taper. The D holes, 190, uh, 129 and two tenths diameter through, 094 land, half a degree taper. So that's the next step of the intelligence. Now we have the, the object transform part of the intelligence, and what that is, is it transforms into, and, and let me call the dialog box up real quick to explain, what it transforms into is a drilled hole, a drilled slug clearance hole. So to calculate this diameter of that hole, certainly we need the hole diameter, uh, we need the land, we need the taper relief, uh, because the, the taper, it's the holes getting bigger towards the bottom. So we need the insert thickness. In this case, it was one inch thick and then the offset per side. So it calculates what the hole is at the very bottom diameter, adds the 062, or the one sixteenth per side. I could make, change that to whatever I wanted to. Uh, um, but that's what it'll change those holes into. So if I go to transform, Object transform, transformed them into drilled holes. Real quickly, if I was going to detail this, uh, this is the backup plate now. So if I was going to detail out this backup plate, I'd do a couple things to clean it up and get it ready for transformation. Uh, erase these first stop score lines. Erase these jack screws for jacking the insert out. Um, transform these socket head cap screws into threads. Uh, transform these pilot holes into drilled clearance holes. I would transform the holes for these lifter guides into clearance for the head. And I'm going to measure the ID of this unified screw plug, which is 0.515 diameter. I'm going to type DR for drill. Insertion point. Chart. And I said 515. So I am going to go with this 33 diameter drilled hole. Now I'm going to go to my search and replace. Oop. Design a uh, transform, I'm sorry. Search and replace or SR from the command line. Snap to the center. And then select all of these guys. Uh, we would transform the screw hole. This is a backup plate. So we would transform these into clearance holes. We would transform these, these screw holes that screw the backup plate to the die yoke to counter bores. We would, the uh, uh, bushing holes for the subliners that were in the die yoke, well, in the backup plate, they'd be a um, drilled clearance hole chart and I know they're five eighths so the drilled clearance hole will be three quarter erase search and replace TT for tap hole transforms it into a tap hole this was for a dimple that gets put in the part so that's not a clearance hole Let's change that to a phantom, so it's a light phantom line. DT for datum dimensioning, B for base, 
A for auto. And yeah, it dimensions it, datum dimensions it. Now let's run the whole chart. So <clears throat> we'll use the select option, select all these holes. And you can see our, um, I'll move a couple to get a little crowded. G hole, two G holes and an H hole. And um, so our 1764 drill through and a quarter inch diameter drill through. So um, yeah, I hope you, you um, enjoyed this. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call at any time or shoot me an email. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, stay tuned for some more stuff. Appreciate you watching.